Hey everybody, James Jaguar Tap Response. Thanks for watching. Back in the Dodge truck, traveling across the country. Uh, <laughs> it's funny when I do these videos from the truck, if I'm driving, people say, you can't do, you shouldn't do that and drive. I'm, I'm just driving. Like, I, I, the camera's right in front of me. It's not like, you know, it's no different than looking at your speedometer or something. I don't know. Um, but um, but uh, Thunder Ranch, uh, high angle rifle training, heart, the heart class at Thunder Ranch. We're driving back from that, and round trip is about 4,600 miles round trip, and um, and so I think it's funny when people ask us about our classes. And they, like I've actually had people in East Tennessee, where our home is, I'm in West Tennessee, ask, when am I going to teach a class in East Tennessee so that they don't have to travel? And I'm like, you know, I, I've there, I, I've never had a student that traveled more to more than me to go to training, so I don't I don't want to hear it, <laughs> but. Um, uh, Thunder Ranch, Clint Smith and Heidi Smith, and then their their able able to, able bodied instructors uh, that, that were helping them uh, did a wonderful job. And basically, the heart class is shooting your rifle at steep angles and across canyons and you know and stuff like that. And um, and for a flatlander like me, it's really it's a really necessary uh, class to enhance my skill set. And as you guys, if you guys watch my videos, you guys know. That the bolt gun, the long range stuff, is my weakest. If you know pistol, carbine, uh, shotgun, long, you know long range. Long range is my weakest of those four disciplines. And uh, so I took this class four years ago, and this time I brought um, brought the crew with me. Nate, the, who typically is behind the camera, actually shot was behind the scope on this one. I was behind the camera. So as you see those videos, uh, and you go, wow, the videography is so much better than typically in these videos is because I filmed it instead of Nate. And then uh, uh, Don, the MF Armor, we'll talk with all these guys in just a minute, the MF Armor, and then uh, and then uh, Kenneth, uh, our a great friend of ours, a retired cop out of Maryland, it's just trained with us a bunch. He went up there and trained along with us and uh, decided to get on this uh, I don't know if epic is a good uh, <laughs> good term for it, but this long motherfucking road trip. Um, but uh, the, <laughs> and so uh, the class in general, uh, I've been talking for 20 minutes. I haven't even talked about the class. Uh, the class in general, um, as I said, is that angle stuff. The two days are spent on the flat flat-ish range, basically gathering your dope and stuff like that, uh, shooting from 100 to 500. Yes. One, 100 yards to 500 yards on a variety of paper and steel. Uh, the paper at 100 and 200 yards for, for gathering basic dope. All the way out to 700 on the flat. 700 out on the flat range. I looked at Don, he said five, I, whatever. He's whatever, you know. <laughs> it's a long trip. I'm going to punch him now. Um, but, so seven on the flat range. Uh, paper targets at, at 100 to 200 to establish some baseline. Uh, zeroing and dope, stuff like that, and then steel targets from one to seven hundred, a variety of steel targets from static to ones that swung and move and stuff like that, and with a variety of drills, starting out at a very slow pace, just establishing uh, zeros and fundamental stuff, you know, and you, and you should have had some type of rifle class before this one. This should not be your first rifle class. You should know how to operate your scope and which way is up and down, and, and so a little bit of advice for you is uh, the knobs, the reticle, and your spotting scope need to match. And, and, and the easiest match for that is if they're all mill. If they're, instead of MOA, like a lot of scopes have mill dot reticle, but MOA knobs. And that, that's a, then you get, now you have a conversion and it's, it's all weird and you know stuff like that. So if you just go ahead and get like, a, a, you know, for instance, throwing a scope out there, a loophole mark five, it's a great piece of glass, um, mill, mill, mill on your, on your spotting scope and everything. So that way when your spotter spots for you, he can tell you exactly how, what your holdover is and stuff like that. Uh, so a little bit, a little diversion there. So um, uh, we got Nate out here shooting the uh, AB arms with the, uh, uh, the the Bushnell Tactical Elite scope on it. And um, that combination works great, except, and this is totally my fault. We, we've been real busy and I got a bunch of excuses, but we had the direct action class and then uh, we left a couple days later to go on this trip and we didn't really have the scope ready to go. And what I mean by that is there is a, a zeroing procedure for setting the zero stops and stuff like that on that Bushnell scope that we didn't understand. So basically, 
Nate being new to long range shooting, sorry about the shaky camera going through a construction zone. Nate being new to shooting, I basically complicated his life by giving him a rifle that we didn't fully understand the operation of yet, or at least the scope, we didn't understand fully the operation. So about a day and a half, uh, Nate was kind of just not doing real well. Not because of him, because we, me and Don couldn't figure the scope stuff out, and uh, and no and no harm or foul on Bushnell or anybody else. We'll get it sorted out. But during the class wasn't the time to do that. And um, so uh, what I gave Don was my trusty Remington 700. I've done videos with it. I took it. That's what I used in this class four years ago. Loophole Mark IV MOA mill reticle, and uh, and then Don, boom. Like, that was it. He was doing, I'm sorry, Don. And Nate was doing great after that. You can feel free to correct me. It's, it's, it's all right, you know. I, I screw this stuff up sometimes. But uh, but Nate started knocking it out. And, and Clint was nice enough. He knew Nate was new. And he gave him some very personalized instruction. Clint's a class act. Um, but anyway, so, um, so we, we had some other... You know guns and issue and ammo and we, you know and just basically it was it was you know the fault lies with me just improper preparation uh we ran out of our match grade ammo and had to switch to different ammo and stuff like that so kind of a uh, a unfortunate comedy of errors however uh since none of the guys had ever done anything like this they still got a, a ton of knowledge out of the class and they, they they completed the class successfully and all that i don't mean anything else um but uh, uh just uh, just a few bobbles along the way so here's what i'm going to tell you uh before you come to any class but especially a class like this know your gun and uh, i'm saying make sure that when it's all put together it's put together correctly and it is loctited the correct Loctite, the correct torque under the screws and bolts and things like that. Make sure you bring Loctites and your fucking tools that you that for your for your gun. Make sure you bring those to the class with you just in case, just in case something comes loose. Uh, you don't want to be a burden on anybody and uh, get it get it fixed right away. And um, know things like when you're laying behind the gun and you're manipulating your knobs, what that does to the impact of the bullet. So if I screw it this way, does it? raise the impact of the bullet or lower it just understand that stuff okay uh same same with your windage then also understand if your knob uh if your scope has that third knob over on the left side for the for the focus make sure that you go ahead and put it in focus i know it sounds kind of weird but having it nice and crisp and clear the focus helps you focus on that crosshair and make those hits and uh, especially when that distance gets further out so it's very critical and also there's a certain amount of range finding um with that so most of them have an ocular adjustment and that's to adjust to your eye like if you wore glasses or whatever that adjusts to your eye and then the, the knob on the side that's the focus for different distances and most of them when you turn it and things become in focus you can look at it there's a dial and it'll say it's like 400 now it's not an exactness but it's whatever you're looking at is about 400 yards away so if you don't have a range finder you can use that to augment your your estimation your visual estimation of where you're going so if you say if you if you look at it go, it looks like it's about 300 and you focus it and it says it's about four then you know well there's there's a problem we need to do a better better calculation um uh do, do, do. now i was again i was a watcher of the class uh, because i was running the camera and stuff like that um, so I'm gonna let the guys talk about the experiential nature of, of the class, but uh, I'll just uh, probably say something they're gonna say. But but Clint and Honey Smith are great people, and uh, if you get a chance to train with them, you should train with them. <laughs> uh, Don, I'm gonna talk to you next, and just keep looking down the road. Okay. You don't you don't need to look at the camera or anything like that. I'll just make sure it's I'll make sure it's pointed at you. And uh, sorry for the wiggling people. I'm just trying to get it set up on Don, and it's about the best I can do. So uh, Don. Thunder Ranch, Hart, uh, what about it? it? Just an overall amazing experience. Um, from day one, you uh, you were fully immersed in not just a, a shooting class, but an actual destination and the people. And it, it's very hard to articulate like everything that you go through in this entire time frame because it, it really is a culmination of everything. Um, but what really stuck out for me was 
the, the attention to detail that they put into your natural point of alignment, your uh, your pressing of the trigger, and running the bolt. That when it comes down to it, that really is what it's all condensed down to. Well, I mean, you know, uh, when we do, when we talk about, like, for instance, shooting the pistol, front side trigger, right? And, yeah, and it just carries over to every single uh, every well, single discipline. Well, I mean, and, and it takes a great instructor like Clint Smith to break it down and go, listen, you need to relax here, you know, natural point aim needs to be this and your breathing needs to be this watch that crosshair press that trigger you know run the bolt protect the glass <laughs> yep, that's pretty much, I mean, you just condensed it down to its most basic formula and and it works if you just uh if you just do exactly as you're told and listen to the people who are the experts in this field it, you're going to be successful um now what gun were you shooting i was shooting a remington 700 aac sd uh in 308 with uh a vortex five and a half to 24 power optic okay i uh, and uh back, i'll just point it back over here for a second uh we shot gorilla ammo for most of it and due to my fault not gorilla's fault i ran out of ammo and and i had him send me some but it didn't get there in time not gorilla ammo's fault but uh but but uh nate and uh don mostly shot gorilla and the 175 motel and i'm telling you like it was awesome just throwing that out there for for gorilla okay go ahead don sorry well i'll uh, add a little bit to that i mean i i, I tried to shoot some uh, some cheaper ammo and i, I was just unsuccessful and, well say what it is so people understand okay well i tried to shoot some uh ppu match 175 grain boat tail hollow point and um I, I really let it get to me. I just was not getting good enough groups at 100 yards. It was more like a four MOA group instead of a, you know, a half MOA group. It was like a six or eight MOA group. Yeah, it, it was really, and, it was really that, that was surprising coming from something that's labeled as match ammunition. Well, you know, not all ammunition shoots well in all guns. And uh, we didn't have, we obviously, because we were at the class, we didn't have time to sit down and run a different uh, different types of ammunition to to see what gave the best performance in each gun at what twist rate and all that other stuff. But as you as you stated, the uh, the 175 grain Sierra Match Gorilla ammunition is, is amazing. As soon as I uh, started running that in my gun, I went from those six to eight inch MOA groups as we were talking about down to about a half inch. We had clover clover uh, yep. impacts. T touch it. Yep. So that's one thing that you can absolutely take away from this is. Know your ammunition. Take several types out there. Zero well, I, 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 well, not. I don't take several types of Thunder Ranch. <laughs> I mean, yeah. In your workup previous to your trip, get out there, try all different kinds and weights in your gun, and uh, see what actually works best. When you go to a class like this, you should have that stuff already ready. Uh, and there's a lot of forums out there, Snipers Hide and, and forums like that, where you can go in and you can say, hey, I just bought this gun. What ammo are you guys having good luck with? And, you know, I bought this gun with this twist and stuff like that. So there are a lot of guys that know a lot more than me out there that can probably help you out. I know some, sometimes it's overwhelming. You don't know who to listen to. Uh, but, but find somebody that you think is a credible person. Uh, but uh, I got to tell you, in most, most every, and we're talking about 308s here, most every bolt gun, Either a 168 or 165 is the way to go. I mean, a 168 or 175 is the way to go. And, and basically, for the 175, it's only a small increase in weight, um, but it uh, it doesn't get all wobbly when it goes subsonic, and that's the reason for the popularity of the 175. Um, and I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, Don. I just want to make those points. So, what else is on your mind about the class? I mean, don't, don't feel like you could be able to keep talking if you're done. I, I'll, I'll interview the other guys. I, I could actually go on for days about it. I mean, <laughs> there's just so much. Like I said, the experience overall is just incredible. And Well, okay, let's break it down to this. So we talked about your gun. Okay. Talked about the class. And you're, okay. Now, the, the other part the other part of this magic is Clinton Heidi Smith. Yeah. So absolutely. So talk about them. I mean, within like 15 minutes of meeting Clint, you're, you automatically just really like being around the guy. He's, he's just simple, straightforward. So what you're saying, Don, is he's nothing like me. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very likable. Uh, no, I mean, there, it's just the amount of knowledge that's walking around with that man is uh, it's just an incredible resource. And if, if you get a chance to tap into that resource, you should absolutely do it. There's not many men like him around anymore. And they're, you know, obviously they're 
becoming less and less. So uh, his, his, his wife, Heidi, uh, she's an incredible lady. I mean, they open their home to us and they make you feel like family. It's not like you're, you're just a student and it's, you're just there, you know, it's like you are welcomed in with open arms and uh, like you have complete access to all of the awesomeness. It's, it's not just a little, it's all of it. Yeah, and uh, I filmed the uh, episode of I Am On Nation, it'll be out in a couple of months, uh, with, with Clint and Heidi, just a, a, a deliberate, unedited, unfiltered interview with uh, with those two just saying what they think and they're and you guys know they're not as they're not as aggressive or uh, confrontational as I am but uh, but unfiltered I mean, you, you're gonna hear what Clint has to say about stuff and how he has to say about stuff it's really gonna be interesting Don anything else before I go to one other guys no no I just I'm interested to hear what they have to say too because everybody's you take your individual experience away from this so getting an after-action report with the guys that you go with or other students is very important because they, they, they experience it from a different perspective and you need every piece of the puzzle to be successful Kenny, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, guys. Kenneth, introduce yourself. Ken Goodwin, Kenneth Goodwin from Maryland, Virginia. Take many classes, tactical response. We'll start talking, man. <laughs> right, no, I, have, I was able to tag along with Yeager. We just happened to talk a few months back that I was signed up for the class. He signed up. So, as usual, I was in Camden and I hitchhiked the ride out here with them. Like you said, it was over 20 some hours to get out here, but the high angle rifle training class. I always wanted to, I've been watching Clint Smith. 15, 20 plus years, always knew he was a Marine, decorated Vietnam vet, still had that presence. He's in his late 60s, early 70s. Close your eyes, turn around, I thought I was back in boot camp um, and back down Paris Island. He has a presence, he has so much knowledge, he has so much, so many, I call them Clint isms or sayings, you know, and his famous one is about logic. But the beauty of it, he takes it very serious about, he gives, has a definition of what a teacher is was an instructor an instructor is written on his desk and he takes that to heart. And we actually had a large class, I believe it was either seventeen or nineteen a, a, people, 18, or eighteen people in our class. And and he had two great instructors, but it still felt as if he got one on one instruction. It exceeded my expectation. I've only been on a ball gun two times, my third time. He helped me dial a lot more things in that I was had no knowledge or experience in. And had some trouble with one of my scopes. His instructor Roger helped dial that in, and Clint followed up behind it. He got on the microphone. We did succession day one and day two in a flat range to get us all out 100 to 700 yards. Taught you how to run the bolt. Taught you, like Don was saying earlier, which ammo works best for your weapon. But moreover, the hospitality between Clint, his wife Heidi, Roger, the instructor, and the assistant uh, Melanie was great. I mean. I mean, think about this. How many instructors invite you into their home and break bread with you? I know two. I know two. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. For me, being in military and law enforcement together over 30 years, I can count on one hand. I've been to over 100 classes where they actually have brought you in to call you on a first name basis. You know, like very few people I call Mr. Smith, but he continued to correct me and just called me Clint. And uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. That was on a flat range, but then to be able to go up, up the... 5,000 plus feet, be able to shoot 300 out to 1,000 yards competently and confidently was awesome. Not only do you learn how to shoot in the class, but you also learn how to spot in the class, which is a skill set uh, a lot of people don't learn or understand. So once you take this class, you go see a sniper movie, you'll be like, the heck with the sniper. It's the spotter who helps that guy get on target. <laughs> right. Which is really great. Excellent. Yeah. That's a good point about the spotter. Anything else? Uh, you need to you need to make it. It's out there. It's beautiful. It's a vac it, it, it's, I plan on going back. You just have to save your money, get out there. You will not be disappointed. And the beauty of it that I had opportunity to go out with a, a total of four of us out there. So it was like a team effort. So we helped each other with food, ammo, getting our weapons straight, and you know checking our notes every night and you know, taking notes and exchanging information with each other, which really helped a lot. Very cool. Uh, SOE Med Bag always with us. All right, Nate. What do you uh, think about it, man? Oh, I had a great time, man. <laughs> this is what I'm excited about right here. Got some of my notes. Get a little bit closer here. Oh, or you show, or you, I thought you were yeah. going to show the sketch. Oh, no, I just some top secret information. <laughs> I can only I can only flash it real quick. <laughs> but, uh, you know they can pause the video, right? Yeah, no. I, <laughs> I can't do that. But uh, no, it was a great time. Um, probably my first first real time on a bolt gun so 
Uh, I was a bit of a soup sandwich day one. No, right? no, no, no. Jumping in here, Nate had only shot a bolt rifle past a hundred yards one time before this class, and it was probably a total of fifteen or twenty shots that he'd ever shot past a hundred yards. So, and that was just a couple of weeks ago that he did that. So. Just put it in perspective. All right, so we kicked him off in the deep end of the pool, gave him some shitty equipment, just to see how he would do under some stress. Yeah, I, I cried on the inside a little bit, but I stuck with it, and um, I learned a lot. I'm sure a lot of it went over my head because I was so new, but like I said, I'm excited about the, uh, the information that I have to go home with now and sort of uh, kind of grind through that info uh, on a range again. And, and sort of commit that to memory and understanding better than what I have it even now. Um, and I'll tell you what, man, Clint is pretty awesome. Um, you know, like I said, day two, I was, start, I was starting to kind of look like I knew, um, I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you'd be down, laying down there behind your rifle, behind the glass, flustered, trying to find your target, trying to figure out how many mills to hold over, trying to remember what a mill was <laughs> at what distance. And Clint would come and sit down next to you or behind you, and you just hear that voice, very calm. He'd get you on target, you just listen to him, and before you know it, you'd start hearing, you know, steel ring. So uh, it was a really cool experience. All right, is that it? Yep. Okay, and uh, so, uh, uh, sorry for the jumpy camera, but we're doing the best we can do here. We're, we're busy people. <laughs> um, so uh, we uh, the whole trip was we left uh, Camden and went to uh, Salt Lake and we uh, hung out with the Black Rifle Coffee guys, did a video with them. So that'll be out uh, whenever. It might already be out by the time this one's out. I'm not really sure on their timeline on that. Um, and then uh, because they're video guys are jackasses like mine. And then... Um, and then uh, the, then uh, Thunder Ranch and then left Thunder Ranch and went to Icon and uh, if you guys have seen pictures of me on uh, Instagram or whatever wearing my leather jacket it's a it's an Icon 1000 leather jacket uh, they make motorcycle apparel we went up there hung out with them there'll be some videos with them some really cool motorcycles and they do really cool videos I post them on my Facebook sometimes like their uh, like their drift video the 4k drift video and stuff like that but uh, if, if you're into if you're into bike if you're into hot rods and bikes and hot chicks uh, you should go sign up and subscribe to their uh, YouTube channel they're, <laughs> they, got, they got it going on um, but um, uh, that's the, that was we haven't done anything else in this trip right and so uh, so we finished our direct action class on Friday jumped in the, the truck Sunday to come here we're gonna get back we'll be home for three or four days and then we leave again going down to Telluric Group uh, to take a night vision operator class. Um, and then three days after that, my third grandchild, my granddaughter, will be born. And, uh, and so I'll be, I'll be tied up there. So, uh, and then a couple of days after that, then I go to Texas for uh, another media event. So uh, no rest for the wicked here. Uh, and that's why it's uh, like people are kind of complain about the quality of the videos and stuff like that this is going to be all shaky gonna be hard to hear and all that but like it was either this or nothing and, and we were, I promise you guys like I got two full-time video guys Nate and Shelton that just they're knocking these things out as fast as they can and and we're at a hundred different places at once and we're, we're, we're doing the best we can on guys you got to be patient with us but but uh, when you when you see this video from Thunder Ranch or I don't know the chronology maybe this video will come out after it i don't know but uh, i'm telling you the views the shots the hearing that steel clang hearing that those clint isms as uh, as ken called them uh i'm telling you go train at thunder ranch man they they book up pretty far in advance but it's okay save up your money you know call them and say i want a slot in this class pay see if they'll let you pay a little deposit pay on it as you go or whatever the case may be but but work it out this is this is this Coming to Thunder Ranch is worth selling some bullshit you're not using to come and take a class. It's worth it, okay? Don't sell your bolt gun. But <laughs> they do other classes. They do all kinds of other classes here. But I'm going to tell you the reason I picked the heart class is 
not many places do shooting off mountains and stuff like that and again bolt gun was my weakest that's why i picked that class but i'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's a pretty cool class regardless you know pretty cool but if you're into carbines or pistols come take something with them uh what else am i forgetting anything if you're gonna come out here and you do get a chance to drive it is a super super long drive but you get to see america i mean what what's out here this is it this is the heartland that's why they call it that yeah. it's absolutely beautiful they're breathtaking i mean amazing well and as you can see we have we, we got the team uh the team driving going on um we got four of us and uh, the drive home from portland to home was 33 and change 33 33 hours and change we're going to try to make it in uh less than 40 uh and we will we might we'll make it in less than 40 but we're driving straight through and uh because i gotta get home with my baby and my grandbabies and my baby's baby and all that other stuff my mom my baby mama and all that i gotta get home and uh, <laughs> but uh uh anything else can anybody think anything, anything? Where are we at now? Is this Wyoming? Or, Nebraska. Well, we're in Nebraska now. So uh, this is what it looks like where we're at now. America's heartland. We love it. We love this country. And uh, don't let don't let those liberal fucks take it from us. This is James Jacob from Town Response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.